Today I'm going to do a video about the top 10 tips for rainwater collection. And especially if you're going to be doing something of a larger scale like this, the biggest tip I would say would be planning. Know the amount of water you need, know your roof square footage and how much water that means by way of collection. Um, I looked up on Google Maps all the dimensions of my home, looked at the roof surface area, looked at all the places that I had gutters, drew out an entire map of the house, went onto city data, and also looked up the rainfall by month so I could calculate out how much rain I could actually collect off of the gutters every month. And when I did all that, I did overlook rainfall that comes rapidly rather than over time. So one huge thing I would say to remember when planning is know the amount of rain, how rapidly it falls, and how much you're going to use and need to store. So tip number two is flow rate. The current gutters that were installed on this house were a standard, I believe Home Depot plastic gutter which perfectly fit in the interior of this pipe, a two inch PVC. So that was the diameter that I went with. However, that might be something to get larger if you know your flow rate is going to need to be higher if you live somewhere where rain falls more rapidly. I could have definitely benefited from using a larger flow rate. Um, I do have some times when it rains where water will overspill even the two inch PVC. Um, Beyond that, I would say the next thing to do would be filter at the gutter level. I bought these at the dollar store. They're regular sink drain catches. And I, they're stainless steel, so they don't rust out. They're cheap because you get a three pack for a dollar. And uh, it's relatively easy to just kind of keep up with, just climb up every couple months or whatever, depending on how much debris you have falling into your gutters and just keep them clean. That keeps less sediment from going down into the pipes. So definitely number two is having a solution for screening. Some people get gutters that have complete tops on them that are screens. Um, I looked at a couple of those, they're fairly expensive, which kind of turned me away from the idea altogether. So with that, you know that you're going to have to have some form of drain system if you're going underground. So with mine, I made an irrigation cap or drain spout, and I made the equivalent of a sink trap. So this is the lowest point of the entire system, and on that end right there is a little red unscrew cap, which lets me drain the entire lowest point of the system so that I can have no standing water in the system so no bugs can be bred through the gutter entry. If you have mosquitoes go down through your gutter and lay eggs into the pipes, then you'll have mosquitoes everywhere. Hey little buddy. You get some extra dogs in today's video. Um, so definitely your number three is low drain so that you can clear the system of standing water in the pipes itself. This will especially apply if you're in a cold climate and you fear for frost. So you don't want those pipes that you put underground to freeze. Um, the next one is, is once you go into your tanks, the tanks, in my opinion, should be sealed. Uh, that will allow you to have a lot more freedom in the way of air control and the water control, in my opinion. That right there, that chimney, is just a pipe clamp around a the top of the air vent out, and it has a piece of screen on it. So it's very cheap and easy and that just prevents bugs from getting in and laying eggs. So I would definitely recommend a step number four being the air vent for your system to be um, some kind of screen or limitation of access to avoid bugs. The things that happen to be obnoxious about rainwater collection is once it's full and you have to realize you can't collect all the water that comes down, you have to have some form of an overflow. So once these tanks fill up, I can't just have water start shooting out of the flow pipe on the top there. So that's when it actually has to come around to this, which is my uh, water spill gate here on this side. So this 
height here is taller than the tank. So when the water fills up over past the tank height, it'll come over here and it goes down that pipe and onto the other side of the fence. And I think you'll be able to see it from over here. And then there's the little drain, the red cap that allows the water to come spilling out of the fence or from the backyard here. Uh, so as not to over or supersede the tanks and make a mess around the house. That also is planned to be on the driveway so that I don't have erosion from a massive function of water coming out because I am diverting all of the rainwater from the entire roof to one outlet point. Um, so the output is something that's going to be very unique to the end user. Mine, um, I would plan that ahead of time, how many outputs you need, where you're going to be using the water, what it's going to be used for, etc. Um, in this, I have one tank which is separated and isolated for the pond which is slowly fed by the other eight um, which come this goes toward the pond and this goes to the garden the garden gets the majority of the water as it needs it and the pond just gets a slow trickle for the river effect or the renewal of water for the fish so mine has a more complicated output and i also have an outside spigot so that i can just drain from the tanks uh, manually if I want to, but you want to definitely plan those things ahead of time because once you've made the entire system, sometimes it can be difficult to alter what you've done, uh, especially if you've done it in PVC, you'll have to do a little bit more cutting and trimming, etc. So plan it ahead of time and know your outputs, uh, know your overflow. I also planned mine to be a little bit further away from my house as I didn't really want to have the tanks that close to the building if one were to break. So I think that's something you really should think about as well is how much water you have and where it is and what would happen if that were a catastrophic failure. What if the tank broke? What if a rat chewed through the bottom of it or something of that nature? You do want to think about the worst case scenarios and then plan for those to ensure that you're not going to have more problems than you should. Uh, the other thing I would say is build to last. If you're going to put the money into it, even if it's just a little bit, uh, I would definitely suggest getting better materials. Use, um, you know, in this instance, I used a more expensive container, but these will last several years compared to possibly a cheap rain barrel container that would last maybe a year or two, which is what I did the first year, um, and found those to be insufficient for my rainwater collection needs. This manual fill is really important if you live with city water because I'm able to then fill my tanks with the city water, let it stand for two or three days, and then use it if I were to have a drought period that were long enough to make it so that I wouldn't actually have uh, enough water in my tanks from rainwater collection. So I did that as a safety backup. Again, another way to just be precautious. So again, in recap, I would definitely say you want to have a very well set out plan, know your end use, know how much your budget is, how much you want to uh, store, etc. Know your flow rate so you can gauge the pipe size that you're going to be using for the whole system. Uh, make sure you have a low drain so that you can make sure all of the water is evacuated from the lower pipe systems if you do go underground. Make sure you vent for air because that is very important. Um, and you also want to make sure that that ventilation is secured from bugs so you want to filter it. You also want to filter your gutters because obviously that's a lot easier than filtering it once it gets into the tank. Um, make sure you have an overflow situation solved so your overflow water that comes from it can actually be drained in a safe place and it won't erode anything around your house. Um, make sure that your outputs are thought out, how many you need, how many sprinklers you're going to have, how large that pipe has to be. Understand the flow rates that it has to accommodate for to get the volume out you need and the time you have. Um, the location of where your tanks are is something that's very important relative to one's home because it can be dangerous if you have a lot of water and it eroded your foundation. Build it to last obviously is a great way to ensure that your investment is maintained and it, it obviously lasts, which is what you hope for. And then I would say just to crown it off, just the manual fill post so that if you have, or a port rather, um, so if you have some shortage of water, which does happen here occasionally in Wilmington, North Carolina, we have some drought periods where we can go for six or eight weeks during the summer where it's in 100 plus degree weather where there's no rain. And that's why I built this was to overcome those drought periods for my garden and so that the water in my pond wouldn't evaporate and make my fish unhealthy. So if you have any questions about any of that or if you want to know more, just comment below. And if you want to see more videos like it, just subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thanks. Hey, puppies.